Here I'm going to discuss a very destructive plant insect called aphids. Now while they may be small in size, what they lack in size, they definitely make, can make up for it in numbers and destruction. So first off, identifying what you have is important. So for identification of aphids, well, they are very small. You can see here, looking at a cannabis plant, how small they look in comparison. So they come with like a little white dust covering the plants. What allows them to kind of mass multiply and is a little scary at sometimes here is that they can be born pregnant. So we can have an aphid kind of within an aphid giving rise to more aphids, uh, really causing their numbers to increase dramatically. Not to say they can't lay eggs, but this is one way that they can mass multiply. They are piercing insects, so their mouth parts are for piercing, looking specifically at getting into the phloem, which transports the sugars of the plant. There are six aphid species in particular that are specifically attack cannabis plants. Uh, while there's many other uh, species, six in particular have been identified to attack cannabis in particular. Now where to look? Most adults do not have wings, so we want to look at the underside of the leaves. They typically shy away from areas of bright light. Some species prefer older um, lower leaves and others prefer younger upper leaves. So where you find in the plant may help identify, identify what particular type of aphid that you have. However, regardless of what type, they all follow the same basic pattern. Um, they all have very similar ways that they can destroy the plant. Early damage can be a challenge to detect in part because that they are so small. Honeydew will be excreted from the aphids and this is one indicating factor when you are looking at identifying them. Now, how to prevent aphids? Well, they can. it's important to do this because they can vector diseases, particularly viruses, potiviruses to be exact. Warm, moist conditions with minimal air movement will increase the damage occurred uh, by aphids. You want to inspect incoming plants for them and avoid high nitrogen fertilization as this can promote lush growth that is favorable for aphids. Aphids kind of like this kind of bloated look to uh, leaves and they can easily cause through and infect that. When they do infect it, particularly when they transmit viruses, you can get this kind of weird mottled look to the leaves. You can also get this weird kind of crinkly look to some of the leaves, and other leaves will look fine. This is very indicative of a viral infection, typically vectored uh, by aphids. And what a vector is, is just an intermediate that can transport um, certain diseases to other ultimate hosts here. Now, how to control them? Uh, two common uh, control methods are lady beetles and green lacewings. The lady beetles can be refrigerated and released at, um, when it's advantageous for the grower within reason and releasing them to the evening or early morning near aphid colonies while the vents are closed is a way to get the maximum effectiveness from them. You may need repeat applications and are easily purchased uh, and released so it makes it great for grower control. Another one that can be used for aphids are green lacewings and they can spread larvae over an area because they're cannibalistic. So if you do buy them as larvae, you want to spread them out because they will eat each other. You want to look for clean new growth. It's a sign that aphids has been uh, killed in the sense that you've reduced that population and the plant's now able to produce new growth again. However, keep in mind if you are using these in a greenhouse and it does get warm uh, above 95 degrees, they typically will leave the greenhouse um, area in secret of cooler temperatures. So again, these are two um, methods of biological control for aphids. Put a little link down here if you want to learn a little bit more about aphids and how to control them and prevent them from damaging your crops.